What's up guys, Brian here with another Java game programming tutorial. So uh, last time we left off, we got our tower base in here. And what we're gonna do this time is we're going to draw the cannon on top and then also start our projectile system. Um, so by the end of this video, we should have projectiles on the screen, but not necessarily functional. Um, but we'll get the base done. So let's go first into our tower cannon class. I'm already in here. And we're going to... I'm not quite decided on how we're going to work like the finalized, um, you know, most efficient method for loading all these textures and drawing them. So, you know, right now they're kind of like all over the place. Like sometimes we're passing in textures to classes here and sometimes they're loading them themselves. Um, but by the end of the game or near the end of the game, we'll have like a very cohesive system for doing this. But as we go along, don't worry if it's not quite as uniform or efficient as it could be. Uh, that's gonna be in the later steps of kind of making everything as efficient as possible. Um, so right now we're actually going to import the, you know, if we're taking in draw quad text, I was gonna say just import the quick load, but Let's just take in all of the artist methods. So helpers.artist.star right there. And let's make another texture. So we have our texture here. Maybe we should call it a, maybe we should call it base texture. And then another one called canon texture. So we need to rename this in here to base texture. And these two over here to, oops, base texture, base texture. And then right under that, we can actually just say this dot canon texture equals quick load. And what do we call it? Canon gun, there we go. And I also have a new, what is this? Oh, we need to rename this as well to base texture. I have a new texture as well, and it's just a gray dot, so don't get your hopes up. It's in the description, you should download it. It's called Bullet, and it's just a placeholder until I or you or whoever makes a more elaborate looking projectile. Um, so it's just a gray circle. And it's also 32 by 32, which I'm not sure if I wanna keep, uh, but I think it's worth experimenting with and looking into because the bullet's not gonna be the size of a tile, obviously. Um, and there's different ways we can kind of make it smaller. But for right now, it's a 32 by 32 texture. So go ahead and in the description of the video, there's a link to download it. Just download it and put it in your resources folder. And then once you have that downloaded, we can uh, continue here. So next we're going to, so we got that, we should draw the canon texture with another draw quad text here. Um, canon texture, and it's already set up so it's uh, centered on the X and Y, so X, Y, width, and height. And that should just draw our canon texture as well um, as our base texture every time we call the draw method for our tower cannon. And next, let's make our projectile class, or at least the beginning of it. So projectile, um, We'll make the constructor here, which should include a texture for it, and X, a Y. Um, I don't know if we need a width and a height. We'll just keep it out for now. A speed, and I'm not sure if damage should be a float or an int. We'll make it an int for now. Int damage and then we'll make those variables appear make sure to import the texture class there and now we need to set the variables so this dot texture equals texture this dot x equals 
x, this dot y equals y, this dot speed equals speed, and this dot damage equals damage. And we'll give it a public update method and a public draw method. Um, but for right now, we're actually just going to call draw from inside of our update method um, until we have our entire projectile class kind of flushed out. So we'll change it eventually, but right now it's easier just to call update and then have it draw itself. Um, so let's try making a projectile now in our tower cannon class. We're going to need to make some new variables here. So for our floats, we're also going to make time since last shot. And might as well make a, not sure what to call it, the time between shots. The speed, I guess it'd be a tower speed, right? Their firing speed. Um, always be specific if you can. So I guess firing speed. That works. And uh, we'll just set those down here. This dot firing speed equals 30 for now. We can experiment with that. And this dot time since last shot equals zero. So in our tower cannon class, let's also import our clock because we need to count time here. And it's gonna be similar to our wave class. So if you remember in our wave class, we have a uh, time since last spawn. And every time we update it, we add the delta time to that. And eventually once it, get back, or once it progresses past the spawn time, we spawn and we set it back to zero. That's pretty much the same exact system that we're gonna use for the uh, tower cannon here. So in our update, we're gonna say time since last shot plus equals delta if time since last shot is greater than firing speed then shoot and so now we need to make the shoot method private void shoot and the first thing we're gonna do in here is set the time since last shot equal to zero because we're shooting right now and we're going to I guess at this point we should make a list of all our projectiles. So at the top of our tower cannon class, we're gonna make a new list. So private array list of type projectile. We'll name it projectiles and make sure to import that. And again, this is just like our wave class where we've, uh, I assume we have an array list of enemies. Yeah, array list of enemies, enemy list. Um, so it's pretty similar here. The wave class kind of instantiates these enemies and makes them over and over when we start the game. That's what spawns all of our enemies. And then it's responsible for keeping track of each of them and updating them. So that's what each of our towers are going to do too for their bullets. So in our constructor here, we're going to say this dot projectiles equals new array list of type projectile to begin the list. And every time we shoot, we are going to add so projectiles dot add a new projectile and it takes a texture so we'll use our quick load method to get the bullet texture it takes an x which will just set to uh our x plus 32 a y is our y plus 32 and then what's next is it like speed or speed or damage it goes texture x y speed and then damage. For speed, I guess we'll set that to five for now. And damage doesn't matter because our enemies don't have health yet, so you know who cares? Set to ten for now. We can adjust all this later. So I think this could work. The last thing we want to do is go to the projectile class and actually put something in this update method here. Um so it's obviously gonna track, or not track, but it's obviously gonna shoot towards the enemy. Um, but for right now, we're just gonna do the absolute basic here and we're just gonna get it to move, okay? So we will have methods either next episode or in a couple episodes or whatever to actually get the bullet to shoot at the enemy, which is pretty important, I agree. 
Uh, but for right now, while we're implementing it, I don't want to go too long. So let's just get a moving bullet on the screen. So we're just going to add to our X, the delta times our speed. Oops, what's wrong here? Oh, that should be like that. And we should import the clock. All right. For draw, we also need to import our artist so that we can draw ourselves All right, so we haven't run it yet to try any of this out, but what should happen is first off, instead of just the base legs, we're also going to be drawing our cannon texture on top of our tower. We're also going to update, and once our uh, time since last shot is equal to our firing speed, we are going to instantiate or create a new projectile uh, at the center of our tower. And, ooh, we're not, we're not updating it. Okay, so in our tower update method, we also need to say for projectile p in projectiles, p dot update. And again, if you look at our wave class, we did the same thing for enemy E and enemy list. If it's alive, update it. We'll create the is alive thing uh, next time. But for now, this should work. So, we're drawing our cannon texture on top of the base texture. We're updating. If we have enough time between the last shot, we'll make a new projectile. And then we're updating all those projectiles and drawing them to the screen. So let's try it out. Come on. Okay, I'm beginning to believe that it's not going to shoot. We do have our cannon here now, which is looking nice. A lot better than our how it looked without the cannon. Uh, let's figure out. I'm missing something stupid, I'm sure, here. Oh, it was stupid. We're not updating our tower ever. We're not calling our update method. Um, so let's call our draw method inside the tower class from within the update method, just like we did our in our projectile. You see how we have in our update method the, the call to the draw method? Do the same thing at the bottom of our update method in here. And then in our boot class, right now we're just drawing it. Let's instead change that to tower dot update. Now let's try it. Okay, there you go. We got a little uh, beautiful, gorgeous bullet texture going across the screen. So the next step in this would be to obviously uh, instantiate the bullets instead of like this spot where it's at, like right below this leg here. We want it to come out of the tip of the cannon and we obviously wanted to go towards the enemy and it will move a lot faster as well because right now I think it's moving slower than the actual enemy so it'll never catch them. So we'll speed it up and make it go towards the enemy and hit it and then you know deal with life pools and killing enemies and whatnot all in the future. So thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time.